Hi everybody, this is Leah Martin from Running Remote and in today's video, we are gonna talk about what I look for in remote employees. We have about 90 plus people in 28 different countries all over planet Earth and we have had eight years of experience hiring remote employees, managing remote employees, firing remote employees, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about all of the things that I look for in remote employees to make sure that they're going to be long-term successful workers. So number one, I look at psychometric testing, and I know that a lot of people probably don't believe in that, but for me, uh, we look at a couple variables that are important that I think predispose people towards having an easier time with remote work. The most important of which, which I think is the one that you could kind of lead with when you're looking at remote workers, is they're more on the introverted side of the spectrum as opposed to extroverted. And what that basically means is they get more energy from interacting with a small group of people as opposed to interacting with larger groups of people. So if you're like the life of the party and you love to go out and you get energy from being out with other people, you're probably more on the extroverted scale. And if you get energy from just interacting with a small group of people or even being off on your own, reading a book, watching a movie, stuff like that, that's how you kind of get your energy, you're more on the introverted side of the spectrum. Neither are good or bad, they're just different, and we usually choose people on the introverted side of the spectrum, and the reason being is they can usually work on their own a lot more efficiently than extroverted people, and in our opinion, it's a lot more effective to be able to work with somebody who has no problem with uh, working alone in their apartment, in their house, for multiple hours and not having anyone else interact with them and they're psychologically okay with that. Whereas extroverted people, they go nuts, they go cat and crazy within a couple hours and they've gotta go out to coffee shops or interact with other people, they gotta go to co-working spaces. Um, those people generally aren't super successful in our experience when working with them remotely. The second major thing that I look for is the difference between education and experience. And this is one that we can apply for pretty much all workers but I think it's even more important for remote workers because you don't get that same non-verbal interaction and intimacy that you would get when someone is in the same office as you. For us, experience is by far the most important variable to define whether or not someone will be successful in a particular position. And I know for people that are probably listening to this video right now and thinking to themselves, oh man, I don't have any experience in what I want to do. Well, that's that's bad for you, uh, that's not great, but you know, we also take chances on a lot of people that don't have that type of experience. It just means that you need to be able to work with somebody that's gonna take a chance on you to be able to develop out that experience very early on. One thing that we found that is generally not that successful is education. So if someone has a degree in uh, product management, as an example, and you hire them as a product manager and they don't have experience, the person who even has one to two years of product management experience versus the person that's gone to school for product management for maybe four years, the person that has that one to two years of experience usually trumps the person who's had the four year degree. And that's something that we've just found as a recurring theme, unfortunately. Uh, I know that that's something that probably a lot of people don't want to hear, but for employers, I would always hire for experience over education. And there are some jobs, particularly in remote work fields, where not many people have experience and absolutely go out and hire those new guys, but I would get people that have experience in adjoining fields. So maybe you're looking for a product manager and they don't have experience in product management, but maybe they have experience in QA testing as an example. Well, hire that person, get them to work remotely and see whether or not they would work because they have experience in that same type of field. The third thing that we look for is my own kind of personal uh, idiom when I think about highly successful workers inside of our organization, which is, are you telling me what you did or asking me what to do? generally divide people within those two camps. Are you telling me what you did or are you asking me what to do? You generally want to be in the side of the camp that is actually doing stuff, even if they're doing stuff incorrectly. It's 
better than doing nothing at all and asking for instructions. The reason being is we run a remote company throughout 28 different countries all over planet Earth. And if you have somebody who is in Korea, as an example, and you're located in Canada, and you give someone an instruction to do something in Korea, and they are frozen because they don't know what to do next, it takes 12 hours before that person ends up talking to their manager again to actually figure out what the heck they should be doing. So a lot of interpretation is really important. Just go out, try something, even if you fail at it, it's more important than not doing anything at all. I tell a lot of people in the company, I'd rather you make the wrong move than none at all because it's so important, particularly in remote businesses, to be able to get that effective action inside of remote workers. It's just so much more important even than when someone is in a brick and mortar on-premise company because they just, the, the feedback loop is so much longer in remote businesses. And that kind of connects into the next point, which is they're not afraid to actually take action. So action over precision is something that we really try to foster inside of hiring our remote employees. So I'll give you an example. Let's say that you have an employee A and employee B. Employee A tries four things, fails at three, succeeds at one. Employee B tries that one thing and succeeds at that one thing. I would rather choose the person that tried four things and failed at three and ended up succeeding at one because generally over the career of that particular employee, the more shots that you have at net, the more times you can score. And people that can move faster and try things faster generally end up being able to build more value inside of your business than people that are a lot more precise about their work and take a lot less shots at net. Now, with that taken into consideration, there are obviously jobs that are pretty important that require precision, uh, like a server administrator as an example. They need to make sure that the server is up and running. If the server is broken, then uh, their head's on a plate. Those types of jobs, yes, you need precision, but anything in marketing, sales, even customer support, some front-end development, all of those things inside of technology businesses, you should really focus on action as opposed to precision. Generally, the people that focus on action will be more successful inside of our business and I think your businesses as well. The fifth point, and this is something that, I mean, we personally do, and I think that a lot of other companies maybe don't do this, is we really encourage people not to take themselves too seriously. And uh, you may be completely different inside of your businesses, but for us, we work remotely, usually work from home, and I find personally that people that don't take themselves too seriously generally are a lot more successful, at least with me. Uh, a lot of my direct reports are pretty relaxed people as opposed to very analytical, precision-based people. I'm quite analytical actually, and uh, it's a nice differentiator between the two of us as kind of a group of like people that are really funny and interesting and don't take themselves too seriously and are afraid to fail versus the people that are very analytical, terrified of failure and get frozen a lot in what they're doing. So we find people, at least on that initial job interview, if they end up taking themselves too seriously, if they're kind of, they show up on a Skype call in a suit as an example, that's probably a pretty big indicator that they take themselves too seriously and uh, not necessarily somebody that we would want to work with long term. However, we have been proven wrong. There have been people that are very, very analytical, uh, do take themselves a little too seriously and they that ended up being great team members inside of the organization. It's just for us, the majority of people that we find that don't take themselves too seriously end up working quite well in remote work positions. So that was what to look for in remote employees. If you have any other questions, please ask them down below and I will endeavor to be able to answer those questions for you. And if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you really like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We talk about remote teams and how to scale them. This is exactly what we talk about. We don't talk about anything else other than that. So if you're interested in checking that out, just hit subscribe, hit the little bell button, and you're gonna get a ton of great videos in your inbox. So other than that, I'll see you in the next video.